Hi, I'm Rebecca Brand, and I'm going to make homemade pasta in this recipe from scratch. I'm going to talk about the very best flours to use and the cheapest flours and let you know if there's much difference. At the end of this video, there are the written recipes. You can screenshot them. Homemade pasta can be so much trouble because it's a lot of work rolling out that dough. I reached out to Andre to sponsor this video because they have an attachment for stand mixers. That's a fraction of the price of a KitchenAid attachment and makes it so easy. And they agreed to sponsor the video because I've always wanted to make homemade pasta without the elbow grease. The ingredients for this recipe are eggs, flour, olive oil, and salt. That's it. I need to clear something about the flour. The very best flour is double O flour. Some people also use semolina, but any old all-purpose flour will work. Here's what these flours look like out of the bag. Double O flour can be very hard to get. This tiny bag of double O flour was $6. I can get a whole 20 pound bag of my all-purpose for $6 at Costco. So in the back of this video, I have both the expensive flour recipe and the all-purpose flour. I did not do anything on the semolina, and I'll tell you why. The double O flour is a super fine, light flour. You can see as I'm touching it with my fingers. We'll take a look at the semolina flour. It's really grainy, almost like a feeling of cornmeal. That's what you would use if you wanted al dente, but I don't like al dente. I like light, airy pasta. With all-purpose flour, I can achieve the same. It's very similar to the double O flour. So I'm good with that. But because I have the double O flour, which I never really do, I'm gonna use that in the recipe today because it is gonna give it a lighter texture. And I do like that in my homemade pasta. And because I'm putting a lot of work into this recipe, that's another reason to go a little higher on ingredients. But hey, no judgment here. I've measured out two cups of flour. I'm using double O, but all purpose would have been the same quantity. Two cups. And now let's get into the eggs. This recipe for either flour takes eight eggs. The all purpose would take two eggs and a bunch of yolks, six to be exact. This is how I separate the yolks. I scoop up the yolk and then just let the whites drip through my hands like a little sieve. For the double loaf flour, I need three eggs. And there you have them there in that bowl with the whites. And look at those little red spots. I wonder if anybody out there knows what those are. That's from a really happy chicken flock. That's a fertilized egg. It could have been a baby. Back two. So we have three eggs and five yolks. But if you were using the all-purpose flour, it's better to have a little more fat and that would have been one extra yolk. That recipe again is on the back. So I'm adding all my eggs first because they're gonna lubricate that bowl and make cleaning easier. I like an extra light and stretchy dough, so I'm adding one tablespoon of olive oil. If you don't, you'll have a more dense pasta, but this is the way I like mine. And a generous pinch of salt, bing! And two cups of my double O flour. Agent double O today. A stand mixer makes this so easy. I love it. I'm gonna turn it on to medium. And that's gonna mix up for about two minutes. That's all. Until it starts clumping after it combines together. And look at that beautiful yellow. Wow. Depending on your size of eggs, it might have a little more liquid than you were counting on. So you can add a little flour to bring that into a dough ball. So I'm adding about, hmm, two more tablespoons of flour. And so let that mix about two minutes more. It'll get to a point where it kind of chunks up. So off it goes, take it off your paddle. And if it sticks to your fingers, add a little more flour, about another teaspoon and attach your dough hook down and on. And let that dough roll, <laughs> about another couple minutes. And when it incorporates itself into a ball, you're done. So pull it off the hook, and with the inexpensive flour, flour a breadboard, and put your dough ball on it. I'm bringing in the corners and making it round, and on it goes. I'm gonna knead it a few times. It's the perfect tenderness because it's not sticky. My hands aren't sticking to it, so I'm folding it in on itself, and it feels really good to me. And so there's our little ball. I'm gonna wrap it, and into the fridge for 30 minutes. It's got to rest. Now I'm going to attach my entree pasta roller and cutter. This entree stand mixer attachment came to my door. It's a three-in-one pasta roller and cutter and attachment for stand mixers. It works great with KitchenAids, but it also works with others as well. I opened up the box. It was packed really well for shipping. And here was everything that came in the box. It had a brush for cleaning and the piece that secures it onto your mixer. I also like that Antry had a food grinder. I got one of those too. It looked great because I like to make homemade sausages. I just think they're healthier that way. I love this because I can take any steak or chicken I want 
and grind it up into patties or sausages. I hadn't seen that from my stand mixer before. That was cool. So unscrew the cap, take it out fully, and pull out the cap. Inside your stand mixer, you'll see there is a shape, and that's a square. You're gonna line up this square with that square and swivel it around until it locks in place. Then put in the entree knob into your stand mixer and twist and tighten it up. It has a spring knob so you can set it easily. To knead or thin the dough, set it on one or two. Three is for thicker type noodles, four is for egg noodles, five is for lasagna, fettuccine, spaghetti and ravioli, six and seven is thin tortellini, fettuccine and linguine, Seven and eight are the most fine, you know, like capellini, angel hair pasta, that kind of thing. So I'm setting it on one just to start the dough process of rolling it. And so it's time to roll our dough out. And I'm gonna unwrap it. Oh, it's so soft and pliable. I love it. Cut it into four pieces. One, two, three, four. And you're gonna wanna make sure it's got enough flour in it. So I'm pressing it down on a floured board and adding a little more flour. This is important. I'm stretching it because I want it to be a rectangle. As I feed it into my stand mixer, I'm turning it on two. And already it just comes right out. And you're gonna keep adding some flour to your board. And the reason is you don't want this to stick in your roller. I fold it up and back in and just keep doing this. and run it through several times. The flour really helps because you don't want it sticking in here. I can see some of the pasta is sticking on it, so I need more flour. So add it Dano. No one's gonna give you a ticket for doing this in the process. And now we can see the roller is clean, so I'm good. When it squishes down the dough, it can bring out more moisture. And after several times, we're now ready to make our noodles. I wanna make fettuccine, so I'm turning it up to four or five. And this side is my fettuccine attachment, so that's where I'm putting it in. On she goes. And there are our noodles, yay! And I put them in a coil and I lightly dust them with flour so they don't stick. And if you can't eat all this pasta in one sitting, you could put it in a bag and freeze it for later. I'm gonna keep making pasta, so this is gonna to go to the side. This really thin pasta is what I love for my lasagnas. It's so light and fluffy. A little thicker version for the ravioli. Or zip it through your noodle maker and make your angel hair. And to clean it is so easy, I just dust off the top with a damp paper towel and I use the brush if I need it. Never immerse this in water. Just use your brush. And if you had any of the pasta stick in that, Throw some flour in it, that'll take it out. So put that pot of water on high. I'm gonna make my classic butter noodles recipe, which is on the back of this video, in case you want that topping. It's made from butter, Parmesan cheese, chives and parsley. It's so easy and so delicious, but it's one where I'm gonna really be able to taste that fresh pasta today and report back. We gotta boil. Add some salt and add your noodles. Fresh noodles only take two to five minutes to cook, so I'm breaking them up and setting my timer to two minutes. Give her a swirl. So I'm grabbing a fork and I'm checking for doneness because I just can't wait. Back in for another minute, bing. Because this is a thicker fettuccine recipe. So chopping my chives and my parsley. So I'm all on deck. So enter the bowl, baby, and add your butter. This is about two tablespoons. I figure the extra can just drip down to the bottom. Oh, and some healthy shredded Parmesan. Shave. And those chives and parsley. Super butter noodles, homemade. So let's try it. I'm so excited to have this homemade pasta maker because it's really the best making it at home. Uh, mm. Oh, yum. Let me tell you, this is fantastic. It's so worth making it by hand. Click the link and get the Entree Pasta Roller and Pasta Cutter. It made this so fast and it's a fraction of the price of other ones made by KitchenAid and other makers. The link in the description box not only has the Entree Pasta Maker, but also has the food grinder so you can make your own sausage. Make a comment below, have you ever made your homemade pasta? I hope you try this. It's so much fun when you love to cook like I do. I'm Rebecca Brand. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified of the next video. Mm. 
and let's keep making great recipes in life like today's recipe for a homemade pasta made simply and easily thanks to entree <laughs> and now i'm gonna have my entree in a corner like a little mousy mm. time for union break <sighs> mm. If you like this video, there's my super butter noodles recipe right over there and some more really great pasta recipes.